Hello, everyone. This is Chala Dinkoy, CEO and founder of The Repositioning Expert. I'm here with another live Tuesday Tea Time with Chala. I am back with crazy hair and a sun burn tan slash whatever you want to call it. This is the only way my hair behaves um, in the Caribbean. I had quite the uh, event. I just got back yesterday and um, it was quite the event. Let me tell you, um, I was flown four hours from my hotel destination. So we landed in one city, but the package was sold as one, but it was on another part of the island, the, the hotel destination. So we were stranded. We ha it was completely null and void uh, reservation. So we had to buy, purchase an entirely new uh, hotel stay from scratch in the moment and just made a blind decision to go. And it turned out to be amazing. <laughs> so my stars were aligned and thank God it turned out well. It could have been, uh, it started off rocky and it could have been a disaster, but it turned out really amazing. And I did burn and peel and, uh, you know, I have the proof, but, um, I think like the, um, yeah, the sun kind of, did some wonders for my bones, my morale, um, just energy. I'm just so happy. I look a little tired today and I do have a bit of a fluff um, topic today. It's not a heavy one, but uh, it's the best that I could do. It's uh, what I can pull together in one day. So um, I wanted to talk to you today about content creation, content, content, content. Everybody's crazy about content, right? Especially after uh, COVID, everybody wants you to put up, put content online. Buyers, B2B buyers now will look at your content uh, like seven times more th than they used to before the pandemic. They're making like 90% of their purchase decision and their journey uh, through watching your content and looking at your content. So content has become even more relevant and important. And here I'm trying to drink and it's actually, I got used to uh, drinking coffee again in um, Punta Cana. So I'm not doing that now. So it is, I'm back to protein, but they carry like two big jugs all the time of one is like boiled milk and the other one is coffee. So all I kept saying was cafe con leche, cafe con leche. And like, it's, it's, it's really great. I loved it. I drank more cafe con leche than anything else. All right. So what we're talking about today is the art of curating content and what it is, is, and I learned about this from an expert. I didn't know you were able to do this. I didn't know you were allowed to do this. I learned this like when I first started my business 10 years ago and it's basically stealing other people's content. And the reason why it's not called stealing, it's called curating is because it has a couple of rules that you have to follow. So um, if you're one of the clients that I have that are either outsourcing this to unqualified generic third parties or worse yet, you're one of my clients who are too busy running after the clients, either the existing client work or new client work. So you're not actually creating anything and you're silent online. This one's for you, you guys. So um, what is it is it's taking other people's um, content, whether it's a video, uh, an article, an audio, any type of information, even a book, and using it for your own thought leadership, for uh, to um, support your own information platform, to make you and your brand look like you know what you're talking about. So there's a couple of rules, though. Otherwise, it's, it's called stealing. It's not okay. It's... Uh, I would not be recommending this to you if it didn't have some rules around it and you have to follow the rules. So why would you use it? Well, uh, you know, Google is an amazing, amazing thing where people on any given subject are pumping out so much information right now, right now, right this minute about the topic of interest of whatever topic of interest that you have. If there's nothing being written about it, I would be very suspicious about if there's anybody willing to pay you for a solution to this problem. So some of the rules around 
uh, you know, using it. Well, first, let me let me get into, OK, we talked about what it is, why you do it is because one, you're time strapped Two, you don't have any ideas of what to talk about. You just are stumped. You don't even want to take the time or the trouble to look around or to look for ideas. What you want to do is you want to have a regular way to communicate your point of view around the topic of interest to your clients, to your prospects. Now, how do you find it is how I find it is through um, there are actually portals of information that have been filtered through my actual interests. So through the keywords that I'm looking for. So for example, one of the biggest ones that I go to is called Feedly. And I believe it's Feedly.com. There's actually, an, uh, I mean, uh, the other one is Google. You could put all sorts of filters and alerts about any topic whatsoever. Um, another one that I know of that I've used, it's called Paper.ly, L-I. And it's a living website or a newsletter that has it's it's funnel topics of who you want to follow and what topics in SEO that you um, want to follow. Medium is another one. So there's lots and lots and lots of ways to find content. Worst case, you just sit down and you just Google whatever that topic is. Now, here's the rules of uh, curation, why it's OK to steal other people's work. One is um, you're going to source it. You're going to absolutely give them credit, say exactly where it's from, and, and even give them links, which Google loves, right? As a content provider, you want people to use your link and you want uh, everybody, if possible, to refer to your links to your website, right? That's rule number one. Rule number two, in my opinion, is you need to know your strategy cold. You need to know your your target who your exact target is in terms of uh, a population that self gathers so that we can have actual keywords against this population so generally how i like to pick a target is by industry or interest group as you know so that's another way to um know yourself know thyself know your strategy is who do you target and then of course do the strategic work to figure out what is the pain that you're going to become an expert in. How are you going to position yourself and what is going to be your super niche? So those are some of the ways that you need to pick those the content, because if it's too broad, you come across as being a jack of all trades and you're master of none. If it's too broad, it becomes confusing. If it's too broad, you start blending in with other people. So the rules of uh, curation, is, as, as I said, is source it to who you got it from. Then you make sure, well, and you know, before you pick the title or the topic, you have to know who you're targeting and what problem you solve so that you can find other content curated or you can curate other content that's been created around the same topic of pain to the same clientele. Uh, then this is the critical part is I want you to add your two cents. So take, you know, a quote out of it, uh, take a book and I've done this and create an entire webinar out of it, take a video and do a blog about it, add your two cents. If you don't have any two cents, I mean, I have seen curated content that is just shared, just share, share, share. Just sharing itself does say something about you. It tells people who you endorse who you follow, who you listen to, and who you think they should listen to. But without your two cents, I still think it's a little naked. And you're letting go of that potential and possibility of stepping out with your own ideas and your own thoughts. Remember, all we're trying to do is position you as a thought leader and an expert, somebody who knows more than others around you about that one problem, about that one topic, and about that one industry that you're helping. And of course, lastly, I would love it if my clients calendarize the content. So I want you if, to make a decision on whether you're going to produce content once a week like I do, for example, and you're going to reproduce it in other ways like I do, or it's going to be once a month or it's going to be every quarter, whatever it is. But the consistency comes in when you calendarize it. So why not look up topics of interest and um, titles according to SEO of your target and the pain point 
of what are some of the titles of the topics of the content that you can actually plot into your entire year or uh, calendar period or whatever it is. So calendarize for consistency. And really, content is nothing if it's not consistent. Like it just goes nowhere if it's just a one once in a blue moon or once and then forgotten. Content is consistency. I mean, listen, I go on holidays. I go, you know, I travel. I do lots and lots of things. I do lots of momming. But the biggest thing is like this Tuesday tea time with Chala. So I want you to be consistent. I want you to be um, on topic. And I want you to bite the bullet. And if you're not going to write it yourself, I want you to share somebody else's content. So that was all for today. I hope that was helpful. All the best and talk to you next week.